let's go here. Meet potion. Meet potion. So there we go. Welcome back to Arcade. I am Super Tommy. And in this video, we're going to show you how to make an item shop in Phaser 3.50 and TypeScript. So this is an item shop like in Zelda. And the key here is actually the Zelda games where you go into the shop and you see the items um, on the store counter and you can go up to each one of them, uh, select them to uh, we call it query or uh, ask to buy it. And then, you know, you, the guy behind the counter says this, says this thing, uh, do you want to buy this art container, this tonic, potion, uh, bomb, arrow, whatever it may be. But all the items are laid out visually on the screen. You go up to one and you can select it. Which is, of course, different than going into a shop and having a UI come down and then you just pick through a list of things to buy, like in Pokemon or Witcher or something like that. Or even Breath of the Wild, um, I think. Not every store in Breath of the Wild uh, had all the items visually shown to you. So that's what we're going to do in this video with Phaser 3.50 and TypeScript. So I'm going to make myself small. So we are already have a setup here and we are using our dungeon crawler character Fane. Now our dungeon crawler series you can find on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash arcade HQ. You probably know that if you're already watching us on YouTube. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, you really should for great videos like this one and this dungeon crawler series. So we have eight and a half videos in that dungeon crawler playlist that goes through creating a dungeon crawler type game. It could be a Zelda type game. Um, and it uses this Fane character. And so in a previous video, we've converted our Fane character movement into a component, a component based system. And that's why we have this, uh, component service in our scene already here set up this component service. And for our player, We've already added a keyboard movement component and our animation on input. So of course, what you see here is we can move left, right, up, down. It is very similar to the to the code uh, logically in our dungeon crawler playlist, but we've turned it into two components that compose together to achieve the same uh, effect. So this is just a better way to organize your code. So we have that here. Now, if you're coming from that uh, component-based uh, player movement video. We've updated this code a little bit, um, but not too much. So we still have our player. We make our animations. Um, we have our component service. We add these two components. Um, what we did here was we made our player a class property, uh, which we may or may not need. I guess we'll see. But for this setup, we did that. That's the main change here. And we've added these three items. So we've got a potient or some sort of you know red goo in a bottle we have this piece of meat and we have this torch i think could be i guess it could be a, a dagger or some kind too spear uh we're gonna call it a torch uh so we have these three items we're gonna use this to construct our item shop here now what you're gonna get from this video is we're gonna show you how to know when Fane is actually facing, let's go here, when your character is actually facing the item you want to select. So, you know, one way you may have tried or think of doing this is to just see if you're close enough to the object, right? Let's say we have a potion. If you're close enough to the potion and you press space, um, then you want to interact with that item. But of course, you could be have your back towards the item and press space, then you really don't want it to interact with that item because you're not facing it, right? You're not, you did not purposely select it as the player. So that's what we're going to mainly get through in this video. So first let's add our items and we're going to do that with a um, static group from, from arcade physics. Now we could add them one at a time. And let's see, should I do that? Maybe I'll do that just to demonstrate. Uh, this dot physics dot add. Let's just call it an image, static image. 
there's no animations on it. Oh, and we added a preloader scene. That's what I forgot from the from the character the component based character movement video. We've added a preloader scene that just loads out our uh, Fauna assets and these three items you can buy. And then it starts our item shop scene. So that's really the only difference here. Otherwise, the setup is the same. Okay, so let's add a static image. And let's just add it at, I have some notes here for where it should be. Let me just double check. Okay. So let's just add this at 140, 120, right? It could be different for your, your shop setup. Um, and we're going to call this the potient. The potient. Yeah, let's do that. Let me just see. There's the potion. Now we are not colliding with this as we do not add a collider. Now, so we're going to add just three of these. And as you've seen in other videos, or if you've used phaser before, you can add these three image, these three uh, physics objects, let's just call this potion. And then later you can do, uh, let's just do later down here, this dot physics dot add dot collider. And you would do, let's say, this dot player and uh, potion. And then they will collide. Right, I can't walk through it now, so that's good. Now, the only thing is I'm going to add three items here, and that's a small shop. You may have a shop with nine items, and then you would have, you know, this that physics that adds static image, nine things, and then this stuff physics that add collider, nine things, which is not as convenient or nice as just using a static group from Arcade Physics. And then you can just do that in basically one call here, add dot collider, give it the player and that group of items. So let's do that. So let's just const items. Um, and we're going to do items this.physics.add.static group. So we're going to make a static group of uh, game objects, and they're all going to be used for our items. So while we could just do this, so and just do items.create, right? I think this is the same signature as this dot add static image. So it wants an X and a Y and then a key. So now this works. Now oh, we'll see it, but I actually got to change this to items. And then I guess it's that. let's do that. Right, so we could do this and this still work. The collision is still working, so that's excellent. And then you can just, you know, do items dot create another thing, um, whatever. Now I have three, so it's not that bad. But if you did have nine, like I was saying, you could still have to list nine. Now we could also make this a little bit better. Now I have a list. I'm just going to copy this over. Not to see me writing out this list. So let's just assume. Go up here. We have a, I have a items data list. And it has a list of all the items I have in the shop. Now you may be getting it from a database or some other thing we're just gonna use this items data list to uh mock your database or however else you're getting your um items for the store it could be like a bigger json file where you define all the items for any given store so we're going to do something similar so given our item static group we're going to just loop over our items data dot for each uh, item and then we're going to create our item based on, let's just do this. We have X, Y, and then I think name item. X, Y, name. X, double check, X, Y, name. Uh, there's also a price, good. So now we have our, our three items here. So bigger, our three items. Good. Everyone will collide with our main character. So that's excellent. And of course, now we just did it based on some data we're given, and then we just take that data and turn it into actual items in our game. Okay, so that's awesome. So now we want to know when we're actually facing this meet, for example, that we want to select it when we press space. Now, but if on the other hand, we're like this and we press space, we don't want to select meet because we're not facing it. You know, we don't want to interact with that thing. Now, there's uh, a few ways to do this. The way we're going to do it is 
Uh, similar to Stardew Valley, if you played Stardew Valley, you in for the Switch or uh, the consoles, not PC, I think, because PC can just click on things. But it, for Stardew Valley, you you just see it actually the cursor on the on the screen when you're farming, and what it, the game does is it adds a little selection cursor in front of that character, so you know which plot of land you need to water or, or seed or whatever it may be. And we're going to use that same concept here to know which item we're we're wanting to select. Adding a little selection cursor in front of our character. So to do that, we're going to add a component. We can reuse this component for anything else later. Uh, let's add a component here to our components folder. Let's call this the selection cursor component, let's say. Now oh, let's just import faded. We probably will need it. Export default class selection selection cursor implement side components. Now just fix that. So for you, the tilde may not work. So just relative path is fine here. And in init uh, phaser dot game objects dot game object. Uh, let's see, private game object. Now we know our character is going to be, at least in this case, all we need to know is their X and Y. So let's go with phaser dot game objects dot sprite. This dot game object as game object dot sprite. If that's not the case, we can change it later. Um, let's see. So game object. That's that. So we're going to want to add a selection cursor in this component. So let's do it in, in an awake. Should we do it in awake? Let's see. We can do it in awake or we can do it in start. Let's just do it in start. Do it in start. We're going to want to make a, a selection cursor. We're probably doing the constructor too. Well, let's just try them all. Let's see which one is better. So private, let's see, so let's call it the selector, and it's going to be a phaser.types.gameobjects.physics.arcade. It's going to be, I just call it an image a dynamic body. So it's not exactly an image. This is a similar concept to our sword swing attack video. Uh, where we show you how to handle melee attacks like a sword swing by uh, showing a physics body at the right time that encompasses the swing uh, motion. And so this is a similar idea, and we use the image of a dynamic body there too. So what we're going to create is actually just a, a square uh, using scene.add.rectangle, and then we're going to add a physics body to it after the fact. So image of dynamic body is the closest, at least I don't know of another typing that comes with phaser that uh, works for that. I think, let me just real quick go in here. Image, physics. Yeah, I think I think that's the best one. If you do have a better one, do let us know in the comments below. So here, that's our selector. Now let's just make a box first. So box would be, we want the scene. So let's get the scene out of our game object. So game object has a reference of the scene that it's on. So scene.add.rectangle. And let's just say, it doesn't really matter. Let's set it to zero, zero. Uh, let's say the width is 16. I'll make a 16 by 16 box. Uh, it doesn't really matter what the color is because we don't want it to see it at all. it would be an invisible box. And then yeah, that's good. Scene.physics.add.existing. So we're going to add a physics body to an existing game object, in this case, our box. And now we're going to do this.selector box. But now Texture is going to complain that box, which is of type game object rectangle, it does not sufficiently overlap with this selector. Now in this, do that. 
And so we can just cast it, but that still doesn't work because it's, uh, it's an unsafe cast, but we are just gonna say that it's okay. So we do it as a known, and then from unknown, we cast it to the type that we want. This is not always the best, and you may run into some issues, um, but for now, I think this works. And we're also gonna say selectors always going to exist. I think we actually can make this in the constructor. So let's just make this in the constructor so that we don't have to do that. And we will want the cursor keys anyway, so let's do that. No, we can't do it in the constructor because init is called after the constructor. So I think awake is the best place. And then we can say that it's safe to assume this always exists. As long as we use it after awake, we're good. So that's good. So we have our selector now. And then we want to move this selector um, on our in our update when we move our character. So just like we've done in the component-based character movement, player movement video, we can take in the cursor keys. So phaser.types.input.keyboard.cursorkeys. Make this read-only. Cursors, just take this type. Good. List.cursors, cursors. Okay, so what we are going to do is move our selection box to the left of the character if we've you press the left key, to the right of the character if we press the right key, and the same for up and down. So it's you know, this dot cursors dot left dot is down. We're going to move our selector in this case, this dot selector. Let's do set position. Uh, we're going to move it to. So let's just get the X and Y out of our game object here. So this is gonna be, let's just say minus, I don't know, minus 16. No change in Y for left. Else if this dot cursors dot right dot is down. So going right, it's plus 16. Then this dot cursors dot up dot is down. Uh, no change in X if we're going up. Up is minus 16. Else if this dot cursors dot down dot is down. Also no movement there, plus 16 on the Y. All right, so let's see, that seems good. This is 50 lines, I like this empty line to end the file. Now let's go to Close this, let's close our item shop. And let's just add this to our player. Components.add component. This dot player new uh, selection cursor. And we want to give it the cursor keys. So there's that. Uh, let's see, selection cursor. Let's just do these. So for you guys, tilde may not work, but the relative path should be fine. So we have our cursor over here. And then when we move, this is almost good. Probably just pick a number that works for all cases here. Right, so down is the one that's a little odd. So let's adjust that. And let's just call, let's just pass that in, right? So we can pass this in as, let's call it distance. Distance, let's call it distance, say 24. And then private read only, it's called distance, and it's a number. This dot number, oops, distance gets distance. So this dot distance, so replace all our 16s with distance. Just do that. Okay, let's see. Yeah. That's uh, it's close enough. We could probably also specify um, an object with left, right, up, down, different distances. I will leave that to you. So that's update, that's awake. Good. 
So once we have our movements there, that's good. So now, of course, this box doesn't actually, but we can, doesn't call out any, anything yet. But you can see that it would um, know, because you're colliding with this, with this physics object, that if you do this, you're not colliding with it. So you're not actually wanting to interact with the potion in this case. Right, so next, what we got to do is make sure that our selector uh, will collide with our items. And so let's see here. So what we can do is actually just pass the items into our selection cursor. Right, so let's just say here we have our distance, but we also want items, and that's not going to be... There's no default value for that. So phaser.physics.rk.static group. So we're going to want a static group that'll be passed in. So private read only items, phaser.physics static group. Now on awake, after we've made our selector, so let's see, scene.physics.add. I'm going to want an overlap only. We don't really need to collide, just we want to know when an overlap has happened. Uh, this dot selector, this dot item, so selector on items. And we're going to, let's say, handle overlap and then uh, nothing for, for the process callback. And then context is this. So handle overlap. We just got to make this method. Let's do it here. All right, the handle overlap, we're going to get object one, which is going to be a phaser dot game objects dot game object. And then the second one should be the item. This will be our selector and this will be our item. And so we, well, we know what it is. So phaser dot game objects dot game object. Okay. So let's just, uh, console dot log our item. Let's see if something should happen. Let's see what this error is items. All right, this dot items, items. Let's watch that, that console output. Oh, nothing. All right, we didn't, we pass it in, we did not. Uh, the items. Okay, now let's watch that console output. And there it is. So this is most likely the potion. Let's just move aside. See if we can tell if this is the potion or not based on, so that's the key, the frame rather. And let's see. Texture is potion. So there it go. So that is the item. But of course, just getting the game object of the potion, in this case, a, a physics sprite, arcade physics sprite, doesn't give us the information. What we really want is this. We want the name of it, we want the price. Right, so that when we show the message to the player, we get the right information. So we can do that by adding a component to each of our items with that data. So let's make an item component, right? We can use these components. We can also make a more generic like data component, but just for easier reason reasoning about right now, we can make an item component. Export default class item implements uh, high component. Great. And let's just fix these imports. In case you do not, not using the same template that we are, uh, phaser.gameobjects.game object. And in this case, I think it doesn't actually matter at all what. Uh, game object type it is, just the basic game object should be fine. And we do need the exclamation mark. Okay, so the whole point of this particular component is really just to store data. So private name, uh, actually just read only, not to be private name, it'll be a string and then read only price, it'll be a number. Let's just say we're gonna do those two things. Constructor name price, and then this dot name equals name. This dot price equals price. So now we'll we'll show you how you can use this to get this information out of the components. So first, I just add out of the item rather. 
let's just go here for each item that we make do that and then we're going to do this dot components dot add and now for each of our item game objects we're going to add a item component with the name and a price now of course you can also give it an id and then do a lookup or something um, that may just depend exactly on your setup but just for simplicity here we're going to just pass in a name and a price and store that as a component just like a data component um, here so we added that, that's good. Now, what we can do is also find components or look for a component on any specific game object. Now that's where this change that I mentioned happened for our component service. That's different from our uh, video that first went over creating this component service. What we are also going to pass in inside init is a reference to the component service itself. So you can then from within that component do components.findComponent on a different game object that may be passed to you. And of course, my component is one of the options over here, right? And I guess one difference is we added a I component service interface uh, instead of having to reference the concrete implementation, but that's just a small detail. So let's just go here. So back to our selection cursor, we're given this game object idle. What we really want is the item component to get the name and the price. So let's say const selected eh, item component. Item component. Wow. Well, component. And then what happens is here we're actually also given components. I component service. Yep, that was imported correctly. And then we can just save a reference here to components, which is an I component service. And this dot components components. And then from here we can do this dot components dot find component. Now our find component gives it the game objects, in this case, the item, and the component type is the item component. Now let's go console.log by item component dot name for item component dot price question mark. Now one issue here you'll see is it's gonna just log over and over again. Right. By potion for one hundred but it's constantly logging because overlap is still true and that, that uh, callback is gonna keep firing. Just stop that. Uh, what we can do is add a selected item here, which is gonna be of type item component. Could be, it could be no. And then what we're gonna do is this dot item component, selected item, selected item, and then I guess I gotta change that. Here, here, that's just the coins. And what we do is if this dot selected item oops, equals to item, we already have it selected. We don't need to do anything. Now let's see. Undefined. Oh, uh, right. Let's just do this. Item component. Item component. And then we just set that there. So if it's the same item component, we just don't do anything. So let's go here. So it only say this once, buy a potion for 100 coins. And then here, buy meat for 500 coins. And then torch, buy torch for 1,000 coins. Uh, with this. I think we can just use this for now. This is just placeholder. Okay. Just make sure this still works. Yep, buy that. Meat. Right, now, of course, you're going to actually want this to only to happen 
when we press space. So let's actually also add that. Now else if phaser dot um, put keyboard dot just down or just up. Uh, this dot cursors dot space. So if space was just pressed and this dot selected item, then you want to actually say this, right? So we're, we're actually going to can do some more stuff here later, but only when we press space and we've when we're looking at it, do we want to be asked uh, to buy. That's the only time we want to request it. Press space, and there you have it. You don't press space, nothing happens. I face the other way, press space, and it still is because our selected item here never gets reset. Now, what we can do is know that if we've moved, we can reset it. So let's do that. If we moved anywhere, we can reset it to undefined so that it's not set anymore. So if you're potion, I face that, press space, and it doesn't ask me since nothing is currently selected. Let's go here, meet, potion, meet, potion. So there we go. You can now face the right item, and it'll know which item you're facing, and then only uh, ask you about that item you are actually facing, you're inquiring about to buy. That was what I was looking for earlier in this video, inquiring about. So... That's it for this video for the item shop. It's not done yet. Uh, come back next time for uh, a video going over showing a dialogue to ask you to buy or not buy. So we're going to show you a dialogue. Uh, it's going to have a yes, no, like, you know, OK or cancel button. It's going to animate in, animate out, um, and do a little typewriter effect. So come back for that video.